While Independence Day fireworks still light the skies of the capital, the three sidekicks are locked up tight in sub-level 42. A commanding voice telepathically urges them to wake up. They do, and find Superboy is standing in front of them. Kid Flash does not like him silently staring at them. Meanwhile, Desmond orders Spence to prepare the cloning sequence, and berates Guardian for letting the weapon stay out of its pod. He uses his genome to convince him to find Superboy. Almost done here, Doc. The sidekicks find out, much to Kid Flash's astonishment, that Superboy can talk. Aqualad asks him about his upbringing. Superboy tells them of how the genomes taught him basic skills, and gave him knowledge of the outside world, but he has not actually seen any of those things, he's never been outside. They try to coax him by telling him there's more to life than Cadmus, at which he grows angry he lives because of Cadmus. To be like Superman is a worthy aspiration. Beyond that solar suit, beyond your pod. I live because of Cadmus. When they offer to show him the moon, and introduce him to Superman, he changes his attitude, but they are interrupted by Desmond. He scoffs at the suggestions made by the sidekicks. Spence is sent to start the cloning sequence, and Guardian escorts Superboy to the exit. Desmond suppresses the shimmer of thought in Superboy's mind with a genome. He crudely orders Superboy back to his pod, and Superboy is forced to obey. Spence initiates the procedures on the sidekicks. Dub Ilex is ordered to download their memories. Superboy, you live a weapon or a person. In pain, Aqualad reaches out to Superboy, who receives the message via super hearing. At the question, what would Superman do, Superboy decides to go back. He easily dispatches Guardian and Desmond. Robin manages to break out himself, and gets Kid Flash out. Superboy frees Aqualad, and they head for the exit. Robin dismisses threats from Desmond, and destroys the cloning chambers with explosive batarangs. An enraged Desmond orders the activation of every genomorph in Cadmus to track them down. Still 42 levels below ground, but if we can make the elevator... Aqualad leads the escape to the elevator, but they are cut off by hordes of genomorphs. While Aqualad, Robin, and Kid Flash are primarily concerned with getting past them, Superboy takes them on. He has to be called back in order for them to reach the elevator. Superboy attempts to fly up with Aqualad, but discovers he can't actually fly. Robin throws a batarang allowing Aqualad to hang on and save them both from falling deeper. Superboy is disappointed in not having the same powers as Superman. They all get out at sub-level 15, forced out of the shaft by the elevator. Superboy hears telepathic instructions, and he relays them to the others. It leads them to a dead end, but Robin notices an air vent. They escape through the ventilation system, but the genomorphs are onto them. I need to get something from Project Blockbuster. Oh, Desmond tracks the heroes with help from the motion sensors in the vents, because Robin has hacked the security cameras. He is confident they have them, and corner their escape in the toilets. But as they wait by the vent, only the genomorphs fall out. Half buried under the creatures, Desmond remarks that Robin hacked the motion sensors as well. Kid Flash finds the stairwell, and with his super speed, quickly moves up several levels. He takes out genomorphs in the process. Superboy destroys the stair behind them, preventing pursuit. Guardian, Dub Ilex, and Desmond take the elevator to sub-level 1 to cut them off. Desmond leaves to take something from Project Blockbuster. Kid Flash has reached sub-level 1, but notices a closing door too late. He tries to slow down, but still crashes into it with some speed. Aqualad and Superboy try to open the door, and Robin tries hacking it, but they're too late. 
Guardian and the Genomorphs have caught up with them. The genomes telepathically make them fall asleep. Superboy is still awake, and finds out it was Dub Ilex who helped him in the escape. He did it because Superboy is the Genomorphus' biggest success, and will blaze their trail to freedom. Dub Ilex drops the telepathic restrictions on Guardian, who recognizes he's been fooled by Desmond, and offers to deal with him. Desmond laughs at the thought, with Project Blockbuster, he can restore order to Cadmus. He drinks a vial, and transforms into a hulking monster. While half the league carries off Blockbuster, the sidekicks wait for a verdict. Martian Manhunter and Wonder Woman urge Superman to speak with his clone, but it's not a very good conversation. He flies off after only a few words. In the meantime, Batman has received news from Guardian, and returns to talk to the sidekicks. He is not pleased that they went off for themselves, hacked Justice League systems, and endangered lives, and forbids them from doing it again. The young protégés stand firm against their mentors. They argue that they did what they were trained for. Batman thinks about it. We'll, uh, we'll figure something out for you. For now, I'd better make sure they get that blockbuster creature squared away. All 52 levels. End results aside, we are not happy. Disobey direct orders and endangered lives. We will. Aqualad, stand down. We did good work here tonight. If this is about your treatment at the hall, why let them tell us what to do? To stay together and fight the good fight. Red Tornado volunteered to live here and be your supervisor. Yes, but covert. But Cadmus proves the bad guys are getting smarter. Martian Manhunter's niece, Miss Martian. I like your t-shirt. Cadmus changes today. No more genome suppressing our wills. No more secret breeding projects. We now know the League is willing to employ young heroes to do their dirty work. 